like to invite you to a gathering being offered through Step to the Music this Saturday in Williston, North Dakota. And this is a visual map workshop. It is something that we have been trying to offer on a quarterly basis approximately, although with COVID it's sometimes interesting to schedule things. But these visual maps are all part of a series called Listen to My Life, Maps for Recognizing and Responding to God in My Story. And I realize that for a lot of people this seems like maybe an odd sort of visual map workshop, and it certainly is not uh, your traditional sort of workshop. However, I do think that it is really valuable. So let me share a little bit more with you about Listen to My Life and the specific map, the Peak Experiences map that we're going to be delving into this Saturday. So just to back up a little bit, I want you to really notice the name of this, Listen to My Life. It's a, it's a peculiar title for a set of visual maps, and maybe you're not even familiar with what a visual map is. But these visual maps are tools that are designed to help you set aside time to listen to your life. And what does that mean, and why would we do that? And to answer those questions, I would like to share with you a little from this book called Let Your Life Speak by Parker Palmer. He is one of my mentors through writing. I don't know him personally, but I really admire his writing. And he talks about vocation. And I want to read to you a little bit of what he says. He says, I was in my early 30s when I began, literally, to wake up to questions about my vocation. By all appearances, things were going well, but the soul does not put much stock in appearances. Seeking a path more purposeful than accumulating wealth, holding power, winning at competition, or securing a career, I had started to understand that it is indeed possible to live a life other than one's own. Fearful that I was doing just that, but uncertain about the deeper, truer life I sensed hidden inside me, uncertain whether it was real or trustworthy or within reach, I would snap awake in the middle of the night and stare for long hours at the ceiling. Then I ran across the old Quaker saying, quote, let your life speak. And again, that's the name of the book, let your life speak. I found those words encouraging and I thought I understood what they meant. Let the highest truths and values guide you. Live up to those demanding standards in everything you do. Because I had heroes at the time who seemed to be doing exactly that, this exhortation had incarnate, incarnate meaning for me. It meant living a life like that of Martin Luther King Jr. or Rosa Parks or Mahatma Gandhi or Dorothy Day, a life of high purpose. So I lined up the loftiest ideals I could find and set out to achieve them. The results were rarely admirable, often laughable, and sometimes grotesque, but always they were unreal, a distortion of my true self, as must be the case when one lives from the outside in, not the inside out. I had simply found a noble, noble way to live a life that was not my own, a life spent imitating heroes instead of listening to my heart. And I want to notice listening to my heart, I recognize that that has some negative connotations for some people. And I think it is something we have to be discerning whenever we take time to listen to our heart or listen to our lives. The idea with Listen to My Life is that this is a tool that we, we look back at our lives and we invite God to show us where he has been at work and to draw our attention to certain things that he wants us to realize about how he's designed us and what he's called us to and the, the work that he has for us in the world and about our relationship with him as well. So 
these are some of the things that can happen as we take time to listen to our lives. So that these, these concepts of let our life speak and listen to our lives really go hand in hand. If we are going to let our lives speak, I actually interpret that to mean two things. One is I need to take time to, to listen to what God is telling me as I look back at my life. And as I do that, then hopefully my external choices that I'm, that I'm making with my life will speak about who God has created me to be. So my, if I let my life speak, that's going to require listening to hear what it's going to say to me, what God is going to say to me through it. And when I do that and when I live a, an integrated life where the internal design that God has placed in me is consistent with what I'm doing externally, then my life speaks to the outer world in a way that I know is consistent with who I am made to be and what I'm called to do. And I think this is something that's an ongoing process for us. It's something I think requires intentionality and maybe there's some standoffishness because our culture does tend to communicate to people that you just need to make your life. And, and like he described uh, for himself, he just decided what those values were what he wanted his noble life to look like. And then there was that continual sense of, of drivenness. And I think that is something our culture encourages people um, to do, is live in that driven mentality. There's a book I love called Ordering Your Private World, and the author Gordon MacDonald contrasts in that book at what it means, what it looks like to live a driven life as opposed to a called life. And it is very different. I, I think a driven life begins from the premise that I am the master of my fate. Um, I am the captain of my soul. I'm not sure what those, what those words in that poem are, but something along those lines. Whereas living a called mentality starts from the premise of I am living in submission to God. I've been created by him and I want my life to honor him. And especially if we've been living in that driven mentality for a long time and, and just making our own decisions about how to live life apart from our maker and redeemer, then it's going to take some reorientation to uh, learn how to live life differently. And so my hope is that this, this tool, Listen to My Life and the visual maps in it can be helpful in that process. So the specific map that we are going to delve into this Saturday is the Peak Experiences map. And I'll just read to you briefly what the purpose of this map is. So each map comes with an instructlet, instruction booklet uh, where it breaks, breaks it down further. And the purpose, it says, uh, the purpose of the Peak Experiences map is to help you uncover who you are by looking at satisfying activities in your life from your own perspective. As you identify these activities and reflect on them, they will become clues to the unique design and purpose God has for you. This will help guide future choices. And so the workshop is going to provide an opportunity for you to come and learn some concepts to help get you uh, mentally and emotionally in a frame of mind where you can enter into this map. And the map encourages you to look back at your life for different satisfying experiences and then consider what happened, what, what made it so good, and how did I respond. And again, we're doing all of this with the purpose of recognizing and responding to God in each of our own life story. So there will be different activities that we do together as a group, different discussions. We'll have time of solitude where each person will go and work on their map to, alone. And then we'll come back together and you'll have an opportunity with one or two other people to share some of what came up for you during your time of solitude, if you want. I always try to make sure that people know that you are welcome to share at different points in the gathering. However, you are not required because this can be uh, something that can can people can be more reserved about. And in in this book, let your life speak. Uh, 
Parker Palmer talks about soul work. He, he compares our souls to wild animals. So envision deer, right? It doesn't take much to scare them away. And so this sort of gathering does require a different tone than, than some workshops uh, because it is soul work. And that's part of the reason that we want to be cautious to not require people to share, but rather invite you to share what came up for you during your time of solitude, if you want. And then some of the other discussion opportunities as well. Uh, you'll be invited to share, but not required if you choose to attend. So please consider joining us. I hope that you found some value in this video. If you watch the whole thing, even if you don't come to the workshop, and uh, please consider coming. Registration does end at the end of Thursday, so two days before the gathering, and the gathering is Saturday morning, January 9th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Central Time, and the cost is $35. So you can go to stepptothemusic.com and find more details. There's also, in the details, there's a coupon code you can use if you get a friend to come with you. You can each enter that coupon code and get $7.50 off a piece. So thank you for your time and take care. Bye-bye.